Welcome back. So, it is fall bulk day four. Skip day three because day three is a rest day, so there's not really anything to film for that unless you count me walking to class being something that's worth filming, which in some cases it might be because sometimes I like to ramble and then maybe have interesting conversations and then other times I don't. But anyway, here in my dorm room right now, wonderful dorm room, I have creatine, which is not here anymore, but got the protein powder, peanut butter, some tuna, some ketchup, just some interesting things. Um, but I already took the pre-workout out. So I got the pre-workout, creatine, about to take it and then get walk into the gym. Um, I'm taking it in a cup today because I left my jug, which is really unfortunate. I did this during leg day too. I left my jug at the frat house. So now I'm stuck with this. And I mean, it works. I, I have to mix, so I got the pre-workout here. I'm gonna go fill it with water and then come right back. But um, I have to start with a knife, a plastic knife. So that's been an interesting slash unique experience that I've had the past two days. But just taking the pre, um, gonna walk to the gym, uh, probably talk about plan for the workout. Today is push day, which I haven't filmed before, so it'll be interesting. It's probably, I would say, the day that I'm the best at, just from a working out perspective. Um, I have a really good chest, just genetically. Uh, I got good bench too, so normally today, I start with like, normally this is what I do, and I'll, I'll get more into it, but I do a uh, flat bench press variation, then I do dumbbells, and then I do kind of dip or something, because I'm trying to bring up the triceps, but get more into detail with that when we get to the actual workout but for now just taking the pre and then pick it up when i'm on my walk to the gym so all right on the way to the gym pre-workout has been taken plastic cup has been put in the backpack um today's chest day so in terms of what i normally do for chest normally it's push so it's chest shoulders and triceps all in one go um start out with a flat barbell bench press with like this is like normal like power lifter bench normally i do higher reps because i just haven't been doing heavy like triples fives or anything like normally i go in like 12 like 8 to 12 rep range for bench um i'm gonna try i'm gonna try and hit 225 for around 10 to 12 last time i hit it for 11 What's up, bro? How's it going? You going to the gym? Yes, sir. sir have a good workout, bro. Thanks, bro. You too. But yeah, no, anyway, um, I'm going to try and hit it for 12 because last time I hit it for 11 and I weighed in this morning at 191.4 and I definitely had a lot of carbs yesterday. So hopefully feeling like nice and full and ready to go and I feel good. Um, so that's definitely in the right direction. Um, and then after bench normally i this is weird and you'll see this in the workout i'll record it um i actually i do like slow tempo controlled like almost like guillotine presses and i go really light here and obviously i make sure that i don't lose control of anything that i'm holding on to weight wise so that it falls on my neck so that would be a disaster but um i just go super deep because it's almost like having a camber bar where like i want to get that injury range of motion to get that big stretch in my pecs but because they don't have a camber bar at the gym, I use my neck crevice as the extra inch range of motion instead of an actual bar, which is weird, but it, it works for me. It fires up my packs and I can go really light on it and still get a lot of stimulus out of it. So good for like stimulus of fatigue ratio and especially after doing such heavy benching where it's like pretty much RPE 10. Um, and that's like not optimal, I guess you could say in terms of training, but I like it because I kind of want to see how my bench progresses. So doing one all-out set of bench to failure at least at this point hasn't really affected the workouts too negatively i just have to make sure that i'm going relatively lighter and controlling and doing everything i should be doing towards the end of the workout or towards like the latter half so start out with like flat barbell stuff and then i go to dumbbells incline dumbbells try and hit the incline part of the chest um like the upper shelf area the I forget what that's called but you know what I'm talking about and then um after that normally I do a kind of a dip because 
you'll see the way I do dips. Um, I do assisted dips because having such control and I'm trying to go for higher rep ranges, it helps with reducing the amount of like joint fatigue and stuff like that. Um, but I get a really big stretch in my pecs, so it's enough that I still count it as a chest exercise, but I also get a really big stretch in my triceps. So, and because my triceps are lacking a little bit in comparison to my chest, I've been running that for the past couple of weeks and it's been working well. I've been getting uh, stronger on triceps and lockout for bench hasn't been as big of an issue. Um, so yeah, and then after that, normally I do delts. Uh, I've been loving delt training. I'm gonna say literally last year. So it's been an entire year I've been doing this and I've noticed a lot of change in terms of like delt development. I've been doing high reps of a cable, um, of like of a cable uh, scapular raise. So like lateral raises are to the side, but then scapular raise, you have to go a little bit lighter because of torque, uh, which you'll see when I record and I'll talk about it a little bit too. Um, and you go in the scapular plane, which targets your front delt more. It's more of just like, sorry, not front delt, targets your side delt more, more isolation compared to using like traps on standard lateral raises because you do involve a little bit of traps. It's impossible to completely isolate a muscle, but the more isolation you can do, the more intense you can go without affecting other muscle groups in the surrounding area. So that's kind of my mentality because I like to train hard. I like to train close to failure, but at this point in my training age, getting more advanced, I have to make sure that I'm doing it, training as intense as I can in a controlled fashion. Otherwise I just get too fatigued and then it just becomes kind of pointless. So that's what the whole deal with that is. Um, and then after delts, I do triceps. And I've been focusing a lot on the long head because that's like a lacking point for me. It doesn't affect strength too much on pressing movements just because that's like mainly the short head, but for aesthetic purposes and balance, long head has definitely been an issue. So I've been prioritizing cable kickbacks uh, as like a primary, it's like the first like tricep movement that I do in isolation. And then I've been following that up with over the head cable raises. And then I'll probably throw a bit of abs in the end, but I don't know if I'm gonna film that because those are kind of boring anyway. So that's what the workout's looking like. It's week four, day one of the mezzo. So in terms of working sets for chest, um, probably be doing about seven. Seven seems about right, maybe seven or eight today. So it's starting to get up there in volume. Um, yeah, it's eight, eight sets today. So it is starting to get up there in volume, but it's, it gets more fun because then that's when you push the intensity and most progress is made in like the fourth and fifth week before you top out in terms of like your fatigue and stuff you have to deal with. So this tends to be the most fun part of going to the gym, but I have arrived, so I'll pick it up when I get to my first working set. So, yeah. All right, about to hit the top set. 2.45, uh, I'm gonna go for around six to eight. I'm expecting, I'm hoping, will I get eight? Probably not. Shoulders are feeling a little bit weird, but um, I'm gonna go at it and then just make sure that for the back downs, I'm not pushing it too hard, because uh, with this, I could definitely feel it starting to take attacks on my uh, my joints and stuff. So I'll just get to the top set, get going here. All right, so I got six, which is lower than I thought, or like right around where I thought lower than what I wanted. Um, not the end of the world. I kind of saw a coming walk coming into this workout, like my front delts were a little bit shot, and I could definitely tell like pushing for RP 10 stuff, PR stuff on bench all the time has taken a toll on like my joints and stuff. So the next couple lifts will definitely be more focused on controlling the weight and then probably 
doing a little bit less intensity as well just to uh, take this workout almost as like a recovery opportunity to still stimulate some growth but not overshoot the fatigue too early because we are still at the beginning of week four so there's another three weeks pretty much three whole weeks uh, of meso left so definitely gonna focus more on like controlling intensity and making sure that I'm not overshooting because uh, I have been and that's the thing when you're like natural and you're not a lot of shit ton of PDs or like going right through puberty you know, stuff when you're more advanced and you're natural like watching the intensity matters like you want to go as intense as you can but like on the, the big lifts that involve multiple muscle groups like bench press even though it's mainly chest like just from bracing like a power lift like I do you get shit like rear delts even like you get all the delt heads uh you get back to like your lats just like locking in um obviously you get a lot of triceps too just because it's a press but like anything like that it takes like just a lot of like just the whole system is working it just it takes a toll on you so you have to watch fatigue so get down with the back downs here do some tempo stuff and then move on to dumbbells or uh maybe dumbbell yeah probably probably do some dumbbells so yeah So, with those, you probably noticed, one, I was controlling the weight a lot more, and then two, my grip was a little bit narrower, because the point of these is I'm just trying to get some good tricep, good chest contraction, and just like feel the muscle, and like, when you have maximum like power lifter grip, you're out wide, like all the way out here, um, it's not, it's, it's a different lift than just trying to control the weight. And uh, I only did seven there. I probably could have gotten a good like eight or nine, but like I was saying earlier, really just trying to control, sorry, not control, but like not go as hard today because like I could just feel like CNS, joints, everything's a little bit more fatigued going into the workout. So it's like working around your body and just trying to like feel where it's at and not, not push it too far. Like there are periods of time where you know you can push it to a limit. And that's at the end of the muzzle. But right now I'm like the middle of it, like just started week four like right now is not the time to be pushing the limits in terms of like joint and recovery and all those things like you got to think smart like it's okay to work hard and definitely better to be working hard first and then like mastering because that's the thing with like optimal lifters and shit like they have like technique down they have their programming down they have all these these fundamental things that, that are necessary to have but it's not it doesn't really matter if you don't have the intensity to like to work with it like you need to have that base of like passion and intensity for your workout before you can start to like optimize it's like molding you know like a clay sculpture like at least with your training like you got to have the clay first you got to have the passion and the flame for it before you can start figuring out how to concentrate that um and that's you know like where you get later into your lifting career like you start to learn how to like focus it and then figure out what works for you and kind of like the, the time that you're at with your training. Um, so that's all I have to say on that really. I'll get over to dumbbells in the next minute here or so. Film a quick set. You'll see the same thing where I'm going like slower control, not using as much weight because the joints can't handle it today. So that's going to be the deal, but we'll get to it. Before I hit the set, I'm going to talk real quick about belts and straps and just any kind of lifting board, knee sleeves, any kind of lifting equipment might be better. So here's my thing. I think, we'll sit down here. I think that using a belt, straps, and knee sleeves or any kind of equipment, it's useful, but it should be used as a tool and there's there's context in which, in which it's better to use it and context in which it's worse to use it. At least for me right now, right now I'm battling joint fatigue, I'm battling 
just like overall fatigue, like systemic fatigue getting up there in terms of like the week of progression where like fatigue is starting to become more noticeable. I think it's tempting to turn to belt, knee sleeve, anything to kind of use as like a band-aid almost to like stop the pain where the joint is in its most compromised position. And that works for the short term. However, what you'll notice is like in the long term, like if I were to do that, and this has happened to me before, I've been like stupid with my training, stupid, just going so hard that like my body has no chance to recover. I'm using like programs that I used in my first like six months of training, like two years into training where like my body's totally different. It's tempting to use those things as band-aids, but what ends up happening is your it, it doesn't allow your joints to have the chance to recover. So like what ends up happening is just like, you're able to push harder, use heavier weights, use weights that your body shouldn't necessarily be using in that context. Um, and if it's done for like over a prolonged period of time where you become reliant on it, I think it actually increases injury risk. Um, and I think in term, if you want to look at like useful contexts for doing that, I think that using it in like a powerlifting peaking program where like it genuinely does help with your powerlifting numbers, I think that that, you can make an argument for that just because like, it's like the specific skill of lifting that weight for a single rep and then those pieces of equipment help massively. But if you're just training and you're trying to grow and just like hypertrophy, muscle growth, all those things, I think that using like, it becomes tempting to just like overlook training like issues when you rely on like belts and usage and stuff. Like I was using my belt and, uh, and uh, wrist wraps for like my bench top set or um, and I only got six and it's like because I could still feel that like my joints in and all that stuff were like still kind of screwy um, and like I know like because you know I've been training for a while that like I need to adjust intensity and maybe use different exercise selection but like for somebody that's just getting into it they probably just throw on a pair of elbow sleeves throw on the knee sleeves and stuff and then just get going and then just try and like fight through it like in all reality it's probably not like best way of going about it. So I just wanted to talk about that real quick before I get into that noise but I get into that noise. Cues real quick on those while I'm still on the camera. So, slow eccentric. Um, when you're at the bottom and your most like your mobility is limiting you, hold the weight there because when the weight when you hold the weight there, if you let the weight drag you past where your mobility allows you to, it, it's a massive vector for growth. So, if there's anything I had to say about that, I'd be like a cue that I would remember. Also, with any fly, any press any anything that you want to target your chest if at the top of the rep you like kind of like bring your chest up and like arch your back you also get a better stretch in your pecs as well so if i had to give you any advice on how to grow big pecs be that so hopefully that helped a little bit uh just like cues and thoughts on like lifting and equipment and stuff like that so we left everybody's training
So with that, what I'm mainly focusing on is just slow eccentric elbows is probably the biggest cue I would have to say. Um, keeping your elbows closer to your body and then not letting them go so far back, but still like letting your chest come forward a little bit. Like essentially the mentality you want to have when doing dips is you want to maximize the amount of elbow flexion that you have because that's going to give you the best, like the most tricep growth, growth. Like keep in mind, like in most circumstances, the more range of motion you have in the movement, the better it's going to be for hypertrophy because it's going to do a couple things. First of all, it's going to allow you to use less weight, which is actually a good thing because it'll put less strain and fatigue on your systemic self and then also joints, um, which could allow you to overload easier just because you're not going to have to deal with as much fatigue. Um, and then also, uh, I forget what I was going to say, but also like going that deep also gives you a big stretch in your chest, which is one of the reasons why I count it as a chest exercise and not, even though it is technically a tricep exercise, it involves everything. So that's the main reason why I did this and hopefully that makes sense. So. Yeah. All right, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about scapular raises. Instead, I'll probably just show and record, but just try and focus on control, keeping the chest up, and just get everything in like the range in which it's supposed to be. So, we'll swap to the recording now. Hey, I'll leave this guy. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Fucking okay, go, pull day, baby. All right, wait. Yeah, I got the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you were recording. No, you were recording. All right, so the reason why I do those is because working the cable at that angle puts a majority of the tension on the shortened position, which is harder to hit on tricep kickbacks. So I'm going to do this and then finish up here and then film overhead tricep, uh, which just as a heads up before I even film it, like it puts a majority of the tension in the lengthened position and just having the varies, like the variation between where the tension is, is really good for accumulating metabolites and blood in the muscle and just like another vector for growth altogether, which is one of the reasons why I do it. Also, this motherfucker is being autistic, bro. He's like, ah. he's, touching, he's touching me. I need to get out of here. Ah. <laughs> All right, just finished the workout. Would rate it. A six out of ten. Honestly, this workout was kind of mid. Um, went heavier on bench press, but the tendons were not feeling it today. So I think in the future, for the next workout, next couple weeks, I'm um, gonna change the exercise selection a little bit. Not necessarily totally abandon flat barbell benching, but uh, I might do like a Larson press variation, which is where like your legs are up, so you're not using leg drive. Um, or maybe just switch to guillotine presses altogether and then just go harder on incline dumbbell and dips. Um, cause at least for those movements, they felt a lot better than the barbell bench that I did the one set that I did. Um, but Hey, I mean, you live and you learn, like, I mean, it's like right now I know my body's not 
used to that so I can say sit here and say like I know what to do now versus like a couple years ago I might have tried to push through it for the next like three weeks which would have just not ended well because it's just not really what I would want so there's that um, I will say shoulders went really well um, volume is getting a lot better I'm able to tolerate a lot more volume in my shoulders and just the pumps are getting like gnarly like I had a gnarly shoulder pump today um, so that was nice um, triceps are like mid definitely feel like they've been worked but had better tricep pumps slash felt destroyed but it's just about fatigue management I'm sure that if my, like, my presses hadn't gone as bad my triceps were would have been like feeling a little bit better so definitely something to consider again like, in the future with exercise selection <sighs> I'm trying to think of anything else to talk about besides training um I have a test I have to take and a dinner I have to attend at 6 and it is currently 4.15 so I gotta get my crap together oh also I will say one thing that is it's nice to work out with friends but my goodness does it take a lot more time when you're surrounded by your buddies and the workouts they tend to go better it's just like the distraction that they have like there and like especially if I'm bringing a camera in they're asking questions it's just like like it's good energy it's just like i definitely would say i prefer to train alone or with a workout partner that is also as like zoned in as i am at least with their training um because it's just it leads to a better workout overall um so other than that training is pretty good um I'm just trying to think you know like i got the band playing over here it's raining right now which is unfortunate but it is what it is um so yeah, probably just gonna go back to the dorm, grab a bite to eat. I will say, so like my body weight is high and my fatigue is high. And normally what that's an indicator of is like inflammation. So normally what I do in those circumstances, just like knowing my body and my body type is I take training a little bit easier. And then I also reduce the food a little bit, like a little bit for a couple days to try and like get a little less full, but also let my body like heal so that like in the workouts after sorry about the background noise by the way but in the workouts after i can kind of push the food a little bit harder but then also push the workouts a little bit harder um so if anybody like note if you like notice that we're like your lifts are stalling but your weight is increasing because that happens to be a lot we're like not a lot but like sometimes like where i'm like okay why is my weight higher but my bench is still the same for example and a lot of times it just has to do with tendons like i get like a lot of tendonitis in like my shoulder like the the joint that connects my, my shoulder to my bicep which is weird but like this way it is um and then also like chest pec strains as well and again and all that just comes back down to like fatigue management which comes down to exercise selection so it's like a bunch of stuff but like Again, as you get more advanced, you have to pay attention to that because that's like the only way to progress again in the long term. So game plan is to reduce food intake for a little bit, uh, try and reduce the fats, keep the carbs relatively higher, um, but just like reduce calories, um, shrink down a little bit, maybe lose like a pound or two of water and then just give my body a rest, try and get good sleep um, and then reintroduce the food and then reintroduce like the intensity with proper extra exercise selection that corresponds to the, the way that my joints are feeling at that moment rather than like overreaching at an earlier stage in the bezel which is what happened today so hopefully that provides some clarity i'm about to go back into the dorm so i will probably leave it here um but hopefully you learned something hopefully this provided you guys with some value um definitely going to work on filming more uh just talking more to the camera like in the sets i guess because i do my little thing before i do my first working set but other than that i don't really talk to the camera part of that's just because uh it's intimidating having like bringing a camera into the gym with like a bunch of other kids in there because like i don't know it's a little weird and got to make sure that you're not creeping anybody out and, like people that don't want to be in the camera are not in the camera and all that kind of stuff so that's definitely something that's still getting used to but i'm gonna try and keep pumping these out because it's good even just for me to have like logs of everything lifts how the day went like all those things just to figure out variables for the future that i can manipulate to help with progress if i ever stall so i'm gonna leave it there hopefully everybody has a good lift so yeah.